Greetings, my little yarnivores, Fiber Spider, back again with another tutorial for you. And today I'm going to show you how to crochet the basket weave stitch. And I'm using some worsted weight yarn. I think this is Karen One Pound, if I'm not mistaken. And this is a size K crochet hook. Usually I use a size I, but for this particular stitch, it is a very dense stitch, and if you're thinking about how much yardage you're going to need, like if you're doing a scarf, this stitch tends to be a bit of a yarn hog. Yes, indeed. Um, it, it's very, very, very thick. It's very textured. It's very squishy, which I love, but be aware it does eat up yarn. Not quite as bad as, say, the crocodile stitch, but oh, yes. It eats yarn. <laughs> so at any rate, without further ado, what you're going to need to do in order to start is it is a multiple of eight stitches plus four. So for this example, I did two multiples of eight, which is 16, and then an additional four. So I did a chain of 20 stitches. So hop right in and we'll get to it. Okie dokie then. Okie dokie. So now to begin with, what we're going to do is a double crochet into the fourth chain from the hook. So we got one, two, three, and then four, aka skip three chains. So we're going into the fourth with a double crochet. Do, 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 do. Because that first three chains counts as a double crochet. So we've got two. And then for this first row, basically what it amounts to is just double crocheting into each stitch as we go along. Nothing too out of the ordinary. And of course, if you need, I do have tutorials on how to do the chain stitch as well as the double crochet stitch. If you need me to go a little bit slower, I do not wish to bore you, but I do wish to be thorough. It's sort of a double-edged sword of what I do. But I do it for you guys, so it is totally worth it. And, well, that being said, this row is almost done. <clears throat> okay. And just a few more, and then we will be on our way with row number two. And this is a very, very easy pattern. Um, yet another one of those where it's relatively mindless because it's very easy to follow where you're at. So that helps. Okay, so we're at the end of row one. So for row two, we're going to start by chaining up two, one, two, and you want to be sure that when you're doing your uh, chaining up of two that your chains are a little bit on the loose side. I can't stress this enough because when you are going back, you're going to need to stitch into those stitches. So <laughs> forewarned is forearmed or etc. you know, vice versa. So, <clears throat> so now we're not going to go into this first stitch here. We're going to do the next one. Now we're not actually going into the stitch. We're going to be doing a front post double crochet. So we're not going into the stitch. We're going around the bar, so to speak, of the stitch with a double crochet. So pulling the yarn through and finishing up our double crochet. So it's a front post. And we do this three more times with a front post double crochet and two more front post double crochets. Okay, so that's a total of four front post double crochets. So you know, this is basically a regular double crochet. So it sort of recedes backwards just a little bit. It's not really going anywhere. So now we did our four. For the next four, we're going to do back post double crochets. 
It's a little bit trickier, but I will try to help you out as best I can. So we start with our yarn over. Now, instead of going in through the front, we are going to go through the back. So I know this might be a little tricky to see, but so see, we have our post here. We're going through the back. And if I turn it, perhaps you could see it a little bit better. Pulling the yarn through, pull through, pull through. Okay, so instead of it being raised, it has been receded. And we end this in the front, that is normal. And so we're going to do three more, so through the back. And yes, it does help if you turn the work so that you can actually see that you're grabbing the post. Two more of these. And also, while you are doing this, be sure that you aren't catching another loop of yarn or a part of the post, but that you are stitching around the post. Okay, so as you can see, we have four front posts, and then we have a total of four back posts. I know this may look a little bit, a little bit weird right now, but it will totally make sense as we do some more rows. So now we did our four back posts and we do four more front posts, double crochets. It's two. Well, this will be two. And three. And four. And then, yes, you guessed it, we are going to be doing another four more back post double crochets. Now also, if, for example, you were to do the brim of a hat, if you do front post, back post, front post, back post, etc., etc., it does create ribbing, which is nice for the brim of a hat, which actually I've done on a previous video on how to make a simple basic hat. If you want to check that out, it's in the playlist. All right, and just grabbing some more yarn, always a good thing. Now, we have our chains up here, and what we're going to want to do is a double crochet into the third chain. So we got one, two, and three. So it's not this one right here, it's the one just next to it. And it can be a little bit tricky as always, but as always, we do persevere. So going into that third chain from the base with our double crochet. Shaboom. All right, and then we will go on to the next row. All right, so for the next row, again, we're going to chain up two, one, two, turn the work, and we're going to leave this first stitch alone. And because in the last row we started with front post double crochets, we're going to continue on with front post double crochets, okay? So again, catching the post. So that's one. Two. Also, it does help that from the opposite side that if you push down that ridge just a little bit. It may sound weird, but if you have it in front of you, it'll make a bit more sense. <clears throat> All right, so that's four front post double crochets there. And then because we did four back posts, yes, we're going to do four more back posts. So again, going in through the back. Now also, there are a number of variations to this 
particular stitch, the basket weave. Um, this one is by no means definitive. It's just one variation of many because instead of doing uh, four, you know, sets of, you know, four double crochet, uh, uh, I'm all tongue tied and whatnot now. And instead of doing just, you know, four, you could do, you know, sets of three, you could do sets of five. Um, scale has a lot to do with it. If you were doing, say, a blanket, you would want to do many more in your increments. Okay. So we did the four back post, so now we're going to do four more front post. That's one. Pushing down the ridge at the back there with my other finger. So that's two. And three. And four. And then we do four more back posts. Yeah, so like I was saying, if you're doing a large scale project like an Afghan, you might want to do larger increments. Um, it really depends on the width and the length of the piece. But of course, it is totally up to you. Nothing is set in stone. It's all about making creative decisions. All right, so we did our four. And then we're going to finish up by doing a double crochet into the second chain on the end there. Do a double crochet. And then I'll finish up this row. All right. So what I'm going to do is, I mean, I could, you know, uh, say that this is the end of this segment, but I'm going to do one more so that there's going to be three ridges. Right now there's only two, but I would like a third. So again, with the following row, you chain two, you turn the work, you skip that first double crochet, and you do four front post double crochets four back post, four front post, four back post, and then a double. But I'm going to do the, the rest of this row off camera, and then I'm going to show you what to do to invert what we have just done. So I will be back in a flash, and I'll show you what to do. All right then. Okie dokie. So as you can see, we have essentially square blocks going on here. And this is, as you can also see, it's very textured, very squishy. All right, so now to invert what we have been doing, really quite simple. We again chain up two stitches, turn the work. Now on these first four, they were front post. So what we're going to do now, you guessed it, we're going to be doing back posts. So going in through the back, and these first four front post double crochets are now going to be back posts. Now, if any of you are familiar with my knitting playlist, this is essentially the same sort of thing, except instead of knits and purls, its front posts and back posts. So we did our four back post double crochets, so we're creating the ridge again. Now we're going to be doing four front post double crochets. So if you have a pattern that translates with uh, the basket weave in knitting, well, this is essentially the same thing, except of course the stitches are much longer. So, a little side reference there. Okay, so we did our four front post. See, we're having a nice division between going on here. And then we do four back post. See, 
again, you know, going through, catching that post. Now, I'm not entirely sure, of course, how this is translating to video, but if you don't try it, you'll never know. And so this is going to be number two. And three. And yes, I'm rather glad that I chose the size K hook because this is really thick fabric. All right, so we have our four back posts. Now we're going to do four front posts. And of course, you can experiment with different hooks. I mean, if you want an exceedingly dense fabric that is practically airtight, yes, you can do even a smaller size hook than an eye. I personally wouldn't recommend it, but again, it also depends on how tightly or loosely you stitch. Everybody's personal gauge is just that. It's personal. It's our yarnivore thumbprint if you will. And so yes, I double crocheted into that second chain. And so you can see we're having a bit of a checkerboarding going on here. So in essence, it, when I'm going to then chain two, turn the work, and continue to do back posts in the first four, then front posts, then back posts, then front posts, and so forth. So it's always back posts. When you have this ridge here, they are back posts. When it's raised and smooth in the front, it's front posts. So I'm going to do another two more rows of this repeat to show you just where it's at. Um, and uh, we'll finish up. Alrighty. Alrighty. So as you can see, it creates a really nice woven looking appearance, a bit of a checkerboard. Now you could of course do uh, more uh, of these row repeats before switching off and doing the inverse. Totally up to you, matter of personal preference, more power to you. The only thing that I would strongly, strongly suggest is that when you're doing this stitch, like most textured stitches, that you use a solid color. Because if you use a variegated color, a uh, colorway of yarn, the texture gets lost in the color. And you're spending so much time and effort creating this texture that why, why take away from it? You know, let those solid colors shine, as it were, with the texture. You know, don't hide them. You know, so with that being said, I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you give this stitch a try because it is really easy and it feels marvelous. And uh, if you liked it, please hit like. Uh, if you haven't already, hit subscribe because I try to do as many videos as I can, time and sanity permitting. <laughs> so listen, until the next video, stay inspired stay caffeinated, and above all, stay stitching. Love you guys, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye now!